Are you interested in doing custom glass tumblers? Well, today on Directed Tech, I'm going to show you how I do my tumblers. So come along and let's keep on burning. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our bed. Now, you're going to need, depending on the machine that you have, you're going to need plenty of distance to put your rotary in. So the first thing that I do is mine is a manual focus machine, so I have this knob here to raise and lower the z-axis of my bed. So on mine, it's a counterclockwise turn that's, gonna, that's going to lower the bed on my machine. I'm going to get it low enough so that I can place my jig and then place my rotary. Now one little tip, I'm going to have to zoom in on this that I'll give you, is I've actually placed a, uh, just a grease pencil mark here on my bed and that just shows me what the safe height is, or at least I need to be below this line um, when I put my rotary in, and that ensures that the laser head can't hit any part of the rotary once I put it in the machine. The next step for me is to place my rotary jig. Now I went ahead and created this one based on the uh, rotary that I have, which is the, and I'm gonna be using the four wheel rotary for this. And I went ahead and I cut this, there's a, uh, a link to the, uh, the video in my channel, but I basically made this jig so that every time I put um, the rotary in the machine, this just sits right here up in the corner of the honeycomb, and that lets me put my rotary in the same place every time. Now before I put the rotary in, I'm going to actually move the head, because remember, once you attach the rotary, your y-axis is no longer going to move, and so just for repeatability, this lets me always put the head in the right position. So I have created a uh, setting here in, in Lightburn that is called uh, rotary start, and I, and I put in parentheses move before connecting, and so if I click that, it's going to take my head to the proper position. Now that we're back over at the machine, the rotary head is in the correct position. And now I can go ahead and place my rotary and these holes on my jig allow me to drop the rotary right into place and then I just make sure that it's snugged up against the uh, walls here so that my repeatability is set and my laser head is already in the proper start position for me. Now that the rotary is in position, we're going to swap out our cables. So opening the side panel here, I have access to my Y stepper motor cable and I'm gonna disconnect that. Make sure your machine is off before you do this. So I'm disconnected the Y, I'm connecting in my rotary and now we're good to go. Now the next thing we want to do is load up our rotary settings. So I'm gonna, I've already got everything calibrated. If you don't know exactly how to do that, it's a, that's gonna be the, your biggest involved uh, piece. If you haven't already found better videos on that, then go ahead and uh, put some comments below and I'll, I'll run you through that. But uh, I'm gonna go in here to machine settings and I'm going to load and I've already got my four-wheel uh, four rotary settings for this particular cup, which is an 87 and a half millimeter uh, diameter tumbler. So I'm gonna load those. Once that's done, now my machine is set for rotary work. And it's, we're gonna write that uh, to the machine. And then I'm just gonna come over here and double check that I've got rotary enabled. Now, while I'm still here, I'm just gonna verify. I'm gonna tell it to move to that rotary start position. So that will move the laser head, and it's also going to spin the wheels so that the machine is at where I want it to be. And in my case, this is, uh, Y is at 181. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that's important in a bit. Now, We'll talk a little bit about how, at least I like to do this, I find this very useful. Again, the whole idea is to be able to uh, make products quickly. So if you create yourself a template, and I'll explain what I have here, um, it, I find that it just makes things very repeatable. 
So what I've done, this is a Dollar Tree clear tumbler. The diameter, which I measured with my caliper, is 88.3 millimeters. Its height is 150 millimeters, or at least that's the engravable height. And then just pi times the diameter is 277.4 millimeters. I've got my start position here, 61.86. And again, this can these positions here, that can be totally, that's just based on where you like to place your tumbler. Maybe you want to put it, you know, um, this is where my laser homes by back right is zero zero for x y but maybe you want your uh, rotary to be closer to the to the you know front of your machine so maybe you want yours down here or maybe for some reason you like to have it in the middle um, that's a totally a personal preference but I know that my laser head is going to start at this position and then I just have this bounding box and this box is created it's 150 millimeters um, basically, I guess you would say wide, even though this equates to the height of the tumbler. So this is the Y, um, or excuse, yes, this is the X axis. So the laser head, when it's engraving, is going to be going back and forth. There's no reason to go past 150 millimeters. And then the total distance, which is my circumference, that's what the, the Y is 277.4. So if I put a graphic inside here. Now if I put it right in the middle, it will be centered. Now if you don't have anything else on there, it really doesn't matter whether or not it's centered. But this lets me set things up very easily and I know where they're going to be. Now one other thing I want to bring up before we start placing graphics is I mentioned that you want this, um, you want your laser to be at a known position. And so in this case, I have my y-axis go to 181. Now, 181, that means I can go 181 millimeters this way, because if I go beyond that, you know, it will, the, the machine will run into an error. It thinks that it's hitting the limits, even though it's, it's running that circular motor and it could go infinitely and never actually hit anything. Uh, the machine will run into, it'll hit zero and it will stop. And that causes a lot of people, and myself included, when I was initially setting this thing up, it, you think like, oh, you know, something's wrong because I'm trying to do a graphic and it keeps cutting part of it off, so I must not have my settings right somewhere. Well, what happens is your machine, maybe you, it, it thinks that it's, you know, for whatever reason, because you're not paying attention or you haven't set the origin, um, the machine thinks it's at 50 and so you tell it to go one direction, you know, 100 and it hits zero and it stops. And But if you go the other way, then it's got plenty of room. So um, very important to make sure that the machine has enough room in the y-axis to cover your entire graphic. Now our next step is going to be to load whatever graphic is. And this is the graphic that I've chosen here. and. So I just have two different colors here. Sometimes when you have shapes within shapes, you have to do a little bit of creativity to make sure that it uh, fills the way that you want it to. And that's why I have these two different colors here. But what you can see is that they are actually set to the exact same um, settings. So with this glass, I have just found that speed of 200 and a power of, uh, oh, they should be set to the same. 16.5 uh, max and 12 of min is what I like to use for the glass. And I'm doing, do, 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 do. I am going to do 350 lines per inch. So coming back over here, that's what I am setting. Ah, come on, if I can. There we go. We're going to set that to 350. So for both of these layers, 350, 16.5, and 12. So now I have everything set in Lightburn. Both of those layers are set to output. And we are going to load our media and frame it and get ready to uh, get this burn started. Now the next step for me is just to place the media in the rotary. So I'm going to place my cup here. And you want to verify that your height, so this is my focus uh, 
to make sure that I'm going to be at the right height for uh, the laser focus. So I've got it set here and I can jog over to the other end of the cup and I'm still at the same height. So that tells me that my cup is level to the gantry. So you gotta make, that, make sure that that is correct. And in this situation with this one, I can just use this knob here to raise or lower the back end to verify that everything is in the right place. And now I'm gonna go ahead and send the laser back to my starting point. So there we go. Now, we need to prepare the surface and I don't, um, I'm still tweaking things and figuring out exactly how I want to do this uh, in the end. But for today's example, I'm going to use uh, a pretty popular one, which is the old dish soap trick. And so people have been recommending to put in, put on a very fine layer of dish soap and this just helps prevent against cracking of the glass. And we're gonna see how this works out today. I don't know, like I said. First time I've tried this one, so I'm gonna get that on there and then we're gonna give this a few minutes for that dish soap to dry and uh, then we'll, we'll see how things go. All right, now that everything is just about dry, I'm going to go ahead and frame this and that just lets me know that all my settings are correct. So as I frame this, I should be able to see that I've got coverage and that I'm not too far out of bounds one way or the other. So that looks good. So we'll just go ahead and fire everything up. I gotta get my chiller on get my fan going, get my air pump going, and uh, then we'll let this thing uh, fire away and see what happens. All right, everything is set, so let her burn. And there we are. So we are complete. You'll see this line here is just from the soap. And uh, now we're gonna talk about how we, what we do with this after the laser engraving is done. Now the last thing we need to do before our cup is ready to go is we need to take care of the surface. Now the laser has actually fractured the glass that's what gives it this etching color and I've, I've looked at a lot of different videos and some people say you can just lightly sand this and you'll be fine uh, but if you sand it too much you're gonna you're gonna chip the glass and then I've seen other uh, videos that say you should do something much more dramatic like take a drill uh, to it with a, a brass uh, wheel wire wheel on it and I've done both and let me tell you you know the first you can see there's a pretty good uh, contrast here, which is great. You say, hey, I, I don't want to mess that up. Well, the problem is, and the reason why I'm wearing gloves, is the, at first I tried to go with the, uh, the gentle plan. And as I would use these cups, I'd notice I have a lot of little cuts on my hands. And I'm, you know, things are stinging all the time. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? And it finally dawned on me that, uh, well, all these little tiny flakes of glass are chipping off and now they're in my skin and that's not uh, not much fun and if you're in the market and you're selling these you definitely don't want to send this off to somebody uh, in that state so 
I have found that uh, this brass wire wheel, which I got at uh, Lowe's, works pretty well. And I just put that on my drill and I set it to high speed and I make sure that it's spinning. I want to make sure that it's spinning away from me. And we're just going to go ahead and hit the area here. And it takes a couple minutes. But you want to get all those little chips out of there. Now here I'll just stop for a second and you can see the little bits of chips that are that are coming out hopefully and uh, those would all end up probably somewhere that you don't want them to be if you don't take care of your uh, glassware after you do the etching uh, like you should. And here's our finished product after doing the uh, finishing touches and washing it back up. Um, the, uh, the glass is looking really good. Now I will say, and you have to be prepared, that the wire wheel technique will gently, it'll put some very micro scratches on the glass. So you do have to be prepared for that. But again, I would much rather, you don't see them unless you're looking for them. But I'd much rather have that than to have little pieces of glass in my hands or in my lip or you know whatever. Um, that's definitely not a sellable product. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please take a, uh, take a couple seconds, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll keep on burning together.